Okay, here we are. I clap. You know what's funny? I clap anytime I start recording. I clap. It's like it's like a like a like a. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claps in the chat. Okay, everybody, say hi, YouTube. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Daily Dose of Classic. I believe this one's gonna be number seven. Uh, this is gonna be Daily Dose of Classic number seven. And what we're going to look at today is uh, something that was released today on Classic Wowhead. We already looked at one guide. Selvian just resubbed for three months. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Thank you, Selvian. Uh, so we we looked at the, the classic healing guide and we, we took a look at that. I would like to keep doing this. Um, I would like to keep looking at guides and stuff like this. And, and Daily Dose of Classic is going to be something a little bit different every day. It might be sometimes it might be me telling a story and just kind of giving you opinion on something. Uh, kind of like whenever we talked about the, the classic wow like uh, the, the potential of having two sections on Twitch, why I believe that one section is better, uh, all this stuff, right? And then, then we had a discussion with Asmongold yesterday, which was, which was cool. Um, I think people really, really enjoy it whenever we get together and talk about stuff. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, today what I want to talk about is this, uh, this guide that was put out by Classic Wowhead. It is the Advanced Classic Retribution Paladin DPS Guide by Impact. This was put out 10 hours ago. So Impact is the same guy who did the Holy Guide. So... Uh, this will be this will be very interesting to see. Um, obviously, not, maybe not obviously, right? Somebody might be new to the channel, so this might be the first time you're watching my video, uh, and, and you might not know this, but uh, that is what I play. I play a Retribution Paladin. That's kind of what uh, made my YouTube channel grow initially. Back whenever I was streaming private servers like two years ago, uh, is that I, I was playing Retribution at a pretty decent level, and uh, people people enjoyed watching that, all that stuff. So. Uh, people have been asking me all day, like, hey, dude, you got to check this out. You got to check this out and, and kind of give your, your thoughts and comments on this. So this is what we're going to this is what we're going to look at today. <clears throat> Watch the streams, YouTube. He starts at 3 p.m. But come at 8 p.m. when he actually goes live. Look, I don't actually go live at 8 p.m. I'm, I'm trying to get consistent timing down. I want to start at 3 p.m. every day. OK, I, I want to. Uh, at least until Classic comes out. But, yeah. I will post whenever I go live. All that stuff. Twitter.com slash SFANTV. I'll post in my Discord. Discord SFANTV. I'm literally SFANTV on everything. It's like the most convenient thing in the world. Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. SFANTV. YouTube, Twitch, SFANTV. All that stuff. Anyway. So, <clears throat> today we're going to look at the Advanced Classic Retribution Paladin DPS Guide by Impact. Uh... I think, uh, let's go ahead and start with the overview, right? I think some of this stuff is going to be very similar to, to what he said in his Holy Paladin guide. Uh, at least that's what I would expect, right? I would expect that. And um, if it is, we'll kind of skip through that a little bit. Um, who Impact did, he's, he's, he was a raid leader and officer for the U.S. Guild of Rathian Knights, currently raids with Big Dumb Guild, who uh, competed in the world first race. So this is a, uh, so Impact's a, I guess he's, he's you know, I'm sure... Like I guess he's like a classic wild guy and stuff too. He's been a classic theory crafter and enthusiast for many years. But he is a uh, he, I guess his his main thing is like he's a retail raider. Um, I, I don't know the guy personally. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, here it is. Talks about like the racials and stuff like this. Or sorry, the, the stat allocation, what class they can play. We talked about this in the last guide, uh, and and this kind of goes the same way for for everybody in WoW. Your your base stats don't really matter so much in classic. It's more about your racials and stuff. Um, that, that is just how WoW works. It's not so much like other MMOs where you might have a, a big difference in base stats and it's like a huge deal to, to pick a certain race based on the base stats. Uh, it's more so in Classic about uh, what, what racial abilities you have. So there's that. Could you link the guide? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll link the guide. I'll also post this in the... Uh, I'll, also, I'll also post the link to the guide in the info on, uh, on YouTube. So um, let's see what he has to say here. Again, this is my first time looking at this. I, I haven't looked at this yet today. So uh, we're going to see kind of just give you my thoughts on this and whatnot as we go along. <clears throat> Humans are significantly better for PvE due to extra weapon skill from mace spec and sword spec. Uh, extra weapon skill as a melee means lower chance to miss, a lower chance to get glancing blows, and a lower chance to have your attacks dodged. Uh, diplomacy is also an excellent time saver for when you want to earn reputation for gear, mounts, and patterns, level 60. Humans are decent in PvP because of perception, which will let you potentially see a rogue before they open on you. If you use the ability when they're nearby, however, because you need to activate perception in order to use it, it's incredibly situational and can be challenging to make use of. So, um, yeah, I, I think if you want to PvE, right, if you want to PvE as a ret paladin, which is not particularly easy to get into a raid and this and that, right, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. 
uh, but it's it's not particularly easy. And and I would even say to, to a lot of people, like I wouldn't particularly recommend somebody to play Rhett just because you have to give like two, three hundred percent effort, like just maximum effort in order to get just less performance than the other classes. Like that is just how it works, right? As like a pure DPS class. Um, that is the reality of it. I like to meme and I like to joke and you guys watch my streams that, and I ham it up and it's like, I, I have fun with it. Right. But I, I, I'm not delusional. Okay. I, I know that Rhett has its down, like his, his, its shortcomings. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I feel about that. Humans are good because you have 305 Mason sword skill. And uh, I guess this was confirmed. There's still a lot of questions about weapon skill. There, there's historically been a lot of questions about weapon skill, but I, I guess people are coming to the conclusion that in WoW Classic, 305 sword skill, the human racial is going to give you 3% more hit chance. Uh, it's also going to reduce the glancing blow damage, which is, it does matter, about half your damage is physical in, in a traditional rep build. Uh, and, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, it's about half your damage in a traditional rep build. And uh, that, that does account for quite a bit, like with the, the glancing blows and whatnot. So <clears throat> next up is Dwarf. Uh, dwarf provides no benefits of PvP. Uh, this is similar to what he said before, right? Uh, stone form is crazy good, crazy good for PvP. Um, as a Dwarf Paladin versus a Human Paladin, Perception is nice. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, per perception is nice, uh, but... Uh, Stone form is is just nuts. I, I think rogues. It's like a big meme that uh, it's a, it's a big meme that paladins are like hard counter to rogues. I think if a rogue actually knows what he's doing, then uh, he can he can totally play a paladin really really well. But um, one of the big things that rogues have versus paladins is the blind, right? Blind two blinds if they prep whatever. Uh, and on top of that, it's a short cooldown. They can just reset, 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 and they have a lot of control over the fight. Uh, paladins. They have Divine Shield, makes them immune to everything for 12 seconds at max level. Uh, and then they also have Blessing of Protection. Blessing of Protection, and you have Forbearance in between the two, right? If you cast one or the other, it gives you Forbearance for 10 seconds. Or sorry, for one minute. Uh, Blessing of Protection is 10 seconds. For one minute, and you can't cast the other thing. So, uh, if that's the case, then what happens is Blessing of Protection only being a melee protector, physical damage protector... Rogues can blind you whenever you're blessing a protection. So pff, throw poison, dust, whatever in your eyes. And then you're blinded for the entire duration of your blessing protection, essentially. Uh, not, not entire, but you know, with the timing and all this stuff, it, it basically ends up being the entire duration. Uh, you can't really do anything other than bop, immediately cast a flash of light, or immediately cast a flash of light out of the blind or something, right? And even then, if it's like he does it a second... Anyway, it's, it's like, that's very specific timing stuff. My point is, is that you can get blinded during a blessing of protection. Now, if you are a dwarf, you can stone form while active grants immunity to bleed, poison, and disease effects. So you can keep yourself from getting blinded, which is huge. Uh, on top of that, you have frost resist, 10 frost resist is nice. Gun spec does nothing for you because um, you can't use guns, but frost resist is nice in PvP. And, uh, and of course, stone form is absolutely insane against rogues. <clears throat> it also stops bleeds and stuff, which makes it good against warriors too. Um, but yeah, or or a rogue trying to bleed you out, right? Doing like the rupture, garrote, that kind of fight, right? That's a, that's another good strategy against paladins. So um, yeah, I would say there's a lot of times as a human in PvP, I will lose a fight, and it it comes down to something like this. I'm like, dude, if I had stone form, like if I had stone form, it would have been the difference. Uh, perception, it's it is more situational because it really only works against rogues and druids. But um, I think a, a, a well-executed perception can win a fight for you as well against a rogue. So um, again, this is—I I know this is a PVE guide, but we're talking about PVE stuff here. I, I'm going to give you my thoughts. I mean, this is this is like my class, right? I, I won't—I won't go nearly as in depth with other classes about this because uh, I, I don't know them quite as well as I know Rhett, right? I—I I, I typically. Uh, I, in general, I don't like to talk about stuff I don't really know about, right? And I'll tell you, if, I, if, I, if I'm going over a guide for another class or something, and I do or don't know something, uh, I'll either tell you, I don't know this, right? And this is what I've heard from, like, this other, like, good player of that class or something like that. Like, I, I'm, I'm very, very honest about that kind of stuff. I think that's important. Uh, I don't want to mislead people, right? Um, like, if, if there's something out there, like, I'll, I'll probably preface it with, like, yeah, this is what I've heard, but don't 
hundred percent quote me on it. Right. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, yeah, both good in different ways. Human is really, really good in PVE. That's kind of the point rambling. Hey, welcome to my streams. That's what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, back to professions. Engineering is really, really good for PVP and PVE, both. Uh, grenades, you can do more damage with grenades in PVE by throwing dynamite or sapper charges on big AOE pulls. Uh, and then also grenades are really good for PVP in general, just being able to stun people. If you stun somebody, you get double damage on a judgment of command. Really, really good. Uh, strengths, powerful raid buffs. Paladin is one of the biggest reasons that many guilds and players choose Alliance. Paladins bring powerful buffs. Yes, they do. Uh, extremely powerful cooldowns, divine shield, lay on hands, blessing of freedom. I'll tell you, I have I have stopped wipes. I have stopped wipes in every single raid that I've been in, every single raid tier that I've been in, I should say, uh, as a rep paladin because I had lay on hands or something. I have uh, I have stopped wipes on Chromagus with lay on hands. I have stopped wipes and Nax on Lotheb with uh, with lay on hands. Right. There's there's always something like a, a clutch bop or something like that where some some crazy thing happens. Broodlord Lash Lair, right? Threat drop goes to somebody else. I bop the guy, he turns back around and gets on one of the tanks. Like there's there's a lot of plays you can make as a as a rep paladin, which if you're playing, like I said, if you're min maxing, like I've said before, I should say, if you're min maxing and you're playing at the nth degree, right, just then uh, it's not even going to be an issue because everybody's going to be so good that no mistakes are ever going to happen, right? But uh, I think for somebody like me, if I'm helping raid lead, if I'm a guild leader, uh, and how I play the game, like I'm, I'm very, I like to look at everything and try and see whatever, what everything is going on. If something goes wrong, I like to figure it out and say like, okay, well, this is what happened here. Let's try and put it back together and, and come up with a strategy to prevent this from happening, right? I, I think as a rep paladin, having that kind of eye and playing in that kind of role is is pretty good for your raid, right? Again, when you're min-maxing to the nth degree, everybody knows what they're doing. It's not a big deal, right? But uh, for how I like to play the game, the kind of raid that I want to be in, um, that works for me, right? So, uh, and and of course, well, yeah, I mean, Holy Paladins can lay on hands or bop and stuff like that too, right? And, and that's kind of the problem with Rhett in Vanilla WoW is that a lot of the, a lot of the um, utility that Rhett brings is also something that a holy paladin brings but what a lot of people don't see like a lot of people see that and then they kind of think the buck stops there whereas by being able to bring a holy paladin or sorry by being able to bring a rep paladin you can still bring a blessing right you still have a blessing you still have another lay on hands this and that lay on hands completely dumps your mana right so if a holy paladin does it they lose all their mana uh and their mana is more valuable than the rep paladin's mana um but also like for example, I can bring like four Holy Paladins and a Ret and have five blessings instead of having four blessings. And then I can bring another priest as a healer. And, and I think priests typically, uh, I, I think priests are typically better healers in, in the sense of them having a more robust kit, right? They just have a more robust kit. They can do a lot more. Uh, yeah. You need to read the comments on the post. We'll look at the comments at the end. I'm sure they're going to be funny. Uh, <clears throat> relatively easy to gear. Paladins are the only endgame DPS spec that uses two-handed weapons as their primary weapons. Warriors are the only other class that uses two-handed weapons as their primary weapon, but most will choose to play Fury, meaning they'll go for one-handed weapons. Two-handed Fury is a thing, but on the Alliance side, it's not as good as it is on the Horde side, and, and it's pretty rare. Uh, so yeah, I, I think this is a this is a pretty common... This is a pretty reasonable thing to believe, right? Like, if there is a... This is how we used to do weapons in our raid. If there is, like, a best-in-slot two-handed weapon, like that I, I would be like first on the list for it, right? Um, if there was other two-handed weapons, I wouldn't get them unless like nobody else wanted them and I was going to take them for like testing purposes or something like that. Um, and like nobody else wanted it. But typically we'd give that to another warrior to use in PvP or something like that. And then the second weapon. So this is this is like another, this might end up being a, another, a whole nother daily dose. But um, in a nutshell, how we used to look at everything is kind of PvE prio, right? Like, what's going to help the guild in the raid the most, right? This would typically mean, like, gearing out our main tanks, right? That was kind of the main thing, right? Gearing out the main tanks, uh, focusing on on that kind of stuff that's really valuable for your raid. Uh, in the case of, like, me, Aret, right? This is, well, this is kind of, like, what you would look at, right? This would be, like, what you do. And then you'd also look at, like, people who bring value to the raid, right? Like, people who are working overtime to, like, help plan stuff out for the guild, 
uh, helping out other guild members, stuff like that. Like they would, they would be considered a little bit more highly too, because they're, they're valuable to the raid, right? As players, they're valuable to the guild as players. Uh, whenever we look at some items, some items would be labeled as PVP items. And these would be typically, these would typically be the two handed weapons. So if let's say an Ashkandi drops, right? An Ashkandi drops, then I would get it first, right? This is what happened, right? I would get it first. But then after that, uh, after that, we would look at like, okay, what are like, what is a warrior that PVP is a lot? And you know, we, we you know, you know who the PVPs are, PVPers are, and this and that. So, um, so yeah, Ashkandi for the hunter. Look, here is how I feel about Ashkandi for hunters. No. No. Okay. Here's 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 how here's here's how I feel here here's how I feel about Ashkandi for hunters. Right. Might as well if you're giving it to the ret. Well, if the ret pally is like you're actually rating as ret and this and that. That's that's not the case. Here, I, I'm joking. Right. I'm I'm mostly joking. But here's the thing. If you compare, let's load up another window. If you compare Ashkandi, and it's not that you never melee with a hunter. It's not that you never melee with a hunter. But you don't melee that often. Right. It's about who's getting the most usage out of it. Now, of course, if you have like a crazy hunter in your guild and, and it's like, it, again, it goes back to like who brings a lot of value to their guild. If they earned it, if they deserve it, that's, it is what it is. Um, Ashkandi, Zenrock Classic. Let's take a look at this. Um, so here's the thing. And these are brought, these are brought in different patches. Okay. But the Ashkandi gives 33 stamina, 86 attack power, right? A lot of times for hunters, melee weapons are, are essentially used as stat sticks. It's not 100% true, but it's mostly true, right? If you look at the Zen Rock, the Zen Rock is basically like a mini Ashkandi, right? Six less, or sorry, five less stamina and 14 less attack power, okay? 14 attack power comes out to one DPS, right? That's, that's how the formula works. So one less attack power, or sorry, one less DPS, 50 less health. That's essentially what this is. Uh, now it does 50 less top end damage, right? And it's slower, but you're not going to be swinging that often with your melee weapon anyway, right? And this is really mostly used in a PvP situation to begin with. In a PvE situation, you can get a better combination of weapons for, uh, for a hunter for maximizing your DPS. So that's mostly how I feel about that, right? Some people put more effort into ASCII drawings than I put into staying alive. Hey, relax, dude. Be careful. Um, so yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, I'm McConnell. I thought, you know, I thought it was funnier that way, but let me, uh, anyway, let's continue. So, <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Um, I, I, as far as, again, going back to relatively easy to gear. That's really the case with two-handed weapons, but you also share a lot of gear with warriors, with rogues. Uh, and even if you want to go with a spell power build, which that's a whole nother can of worms, um, that's even harder to gear because you share gear with, with the casters, right? And, and that's, again, that's not particularly intuitive. And to convince your guild to give you caster gear is, is probably not going to be very easy. So, yeah. Um... Weaknesses, not very mobile, low sustained damage. Yeah, uh, Red Palin's going to be bottom of the DPS in most raids. At every phase, other DPS like Rogues and Warriors will be far superior damage in raids. For this reason, Rets are a rarity in most raid groups. In PvP, you have a high potential for burst if your autos and seal procs crit, but your sustained damage in PvE will be on the lower end. Yeah, and, and that's true. That's, that's just the case, right? Um, they, typically, Rets not going to be the, the highest DPS. Like I said, you got to give this much effort for this much output, and that's just how it goes. Uh, viability... Uh, do their low damage rep palons are not generally found in most groups fast majority of ret will choose to raid as holy for easier access to a raid spot But some ret will find guild and groups to run with if a group decides to bring a rep paladin Usually will be one at the most because it will be because of missing blessing from not enough holy paladins So if you want to run a raid as a ret know that's an uphill battle and finding a group to consistently run with will be a challenge Yeah, I, I think this is probably the case, right? but uh Like i've said before like when it comes to viable like this word is is so the, the the misunderstanding of what this word means to people is is so dumb, right? A lot of people think viable and optimal are the same thing, and they're not, 
right? Optimal is when you're talking about like speed clears and this and that and the most effective thing. Viable means like, can you do it, right? Can, like, is it possible? And that's kind of been my point with Rep Paladin all along is that you can do all the raid content in the game as a Rep Paladin. Are you going to be the highest performing player in the raid? No, but it's fun to play. It's fun to watch. Um, something that I didn't even know. I've always played Rhett. I've always played Rhett in vanilla. Uh, something that I didn't even realize. Here's a little secret. Okay. Rhett Paladin, secret, best in slot, streaming class. Why? You just auto attack, put on your seal, and you just talk to chat. That's what you do. Yeah, auto attack, put on the seal, and talk to chat. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, feedback, whatever. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, beginners. It's not really like that, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm speaking in hyperbole. Okay, so uh, let's look at this. Um, is there anything else? Professions, we're going to talk about that. Let's look at talents. Okay, uh, so talent build for Rhett. Um... Okay, interesting. Let's talk about this. So he's saying you go five divine strength, five spiritual focus, one consecration, diva aura, precision, improve blessing of might, improve judgment, seal the crusader, conviction, seal of command, pursuit of justice, two handed weapons pick, sanctity aura, vengeance, and repentance. So I, I did a two part video um, a long time ago, right? Which which actually has a lot of inaccuracies in it, just because it was like early private server stuff, whatever. Uh, and things have changed on private servers. Things are going to change on classic. I, I'm probably going to make another one. The light and how to swing it digitally remastered on Blu-ray and DVD. Okay, coming whenever classic comes out. Um, but for for this, I actually said this build specifically in the first video. Uh, but what I didn't explain is that this is something where I only like spiritual focus. Okay. I only like spiritual focus in the situation of it's like early, early vanilla. You don't have a lot of intellect on your gear and you might be in a situation where you can heal and keep yourself from dying and uh, like in a five man or something like that. Later on, uh, once you start getting some intellect on your gear and stuff, especially divine intellect becomes better and you're not really going to be in a situation where you're going to be healing while taking damage. Because most times... Most times, whenever you're healing, then in a situation where you would have to heal yourself while taking damage, you're probably going to die, right? In early vanilla, it's not quite as much like that in a dungeon or whatever. Um, so anyway, let's see. This is the primary PvE build that you will use as a Rep Paladin. Builds based around picking up every major talent in the Rep Tree. Vengeance, Sanctity, Aura, Seal of Command, which are all essential DPS as a Paladin. Seal of Command is critical to your damage rotation. It gives you the highest damage output once you have a slow weapon that can fully make use of the proc. In raids, this is especially important because it allows you to do damage without taking up a debuff slot, which are limited on the enemies. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing... The debuff slot thing isn't, isn't as big of a deal um, unless you have, like, a judgment up, right? In the protection tree, you pick up precision for the extra 3% hit chance, right? You can choose to skip this if you're already at the 9% hit needed for cap, meaning you'll never miss with spells. Um, or, or it's your tax, right? In your in your holy tree, divine strength offers a nice increase to your strength. While consecration is a nice AOE damage ability that can also be used on single target if you have the extra mana. Stat priorities: strength. Strength is Rep Paladin's most important primary attribute, giving you two attack power per point of strength. Attack power increases the damage you deal with attacks and abilities, making it an important stat. You will get most of your AP through strength, so be on the lookout for armor with strength on it. Agility crit chance. When you critically strike with an attack, the attack deals 200% of its normal damage. For Rep Paladin, this is especially important due to vengeance. Yes. Vengeance is kind of like the key to your damage. Uh, being able to crit frequently is important for your DPS, meaning it's a valuable stat. You can increase your you can increase your chance to critically strike through both agility and crit chance with 20 agility, increasing your chance to crit by 1%. Uh, this is another important stat to look for on gear. Uh, one second, let me fix this. Um... Okay. Um, hit chance. Yeah. Well, hit, hit chance is really like, I think in general, you want your hit chance to be capped no matter what. And then you kind of work on your, your more primary stats. Enemies in classic WoW have a chance to avoid your attacks in a few different ways. Some of them you can prevent by standing behind the enemy while attacking, but this will not reduce your chance to miss. 
Instead, you can reduce the chance to miss an attack by increasing your hit chance. Against bosses, you have 8.6% chance to miss by default. That means you need 9% increased chance to be hit capped. So that means you'll never miss an ability. Weapon skill. Weapon skill is extremely valuable for Rhett. First off, you should always have 300 weapon skill with whatever two-handed weapon. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I lost my train. Okay, whatever two-handed weapon you use at level 60, which, if you're a human, should be swords and maces. Weapon skill reduces the chance for a miss, dodge, parry, or block, as well as increasing critical strike chance. If you get a new weapon of a type that you have not trained before, make sure to visit a weapon master in a major city to learn how to use that weapon type. Your weapon skill will start at 1, but you'll quickly gain skill points for that weapon type by using that weapon to kill enemies. So, here's the thing with weapon skill. Um, the only thing that gives you weapon skill for two-handed weapons, right, this is a big misconception, is a lot of times people talk about... Uh, a lot, a lot of times people talk about Edge Master's hand guards. Edge Master's hand guards does not work for two-handed weapons. It is it is a strictly one-handed uh, one. They don't. It strictly gives you one-handed skill. The only thing that gives you two-handed skill, I believe, is Obsidian Edge Blade. Unless I'm forgetting something, I, I believe Obsidian Edge Blade is the only weapon that gives you two-handed weapon skill, um, and it gives you eight, which is really nice. You have three thirteen weapon skill. You don't have to worry about glancing all that stuff, but. Um, Unfortunately, there's nothing else after that. At least that I can think. I could be mistaken, but I, I'm I'm pretty sure that's right. I, I've I've checked before and I couldn't find anything. Um, I lost my tabs here. I've I have like a million windows open. I gotta fix this here. I'm just gonna close out of this, close out of that, and then we'll get back to it. Sorry. Um. Okay. Moving on. Um, so yeah, let's talk about stat priorities a little bit. He says strength over agility crit. I think, I think that there's something to be said about uh, getting your crit chance, agility, whatever, to a certain point. I, to be completely honest with you, I have not figured out, decided what that certain point is. But vengeance is such a big part of your damage it is it is a it is one of the keys to your dps uh basically you do 15 percent bonus holy and physical damage for eight seconds after dealing a crit so this means if if command procs crits if white hit crits whatever right if you get a crit it'll proc vengeance and that's really 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 good um now i think that if you're 100 percent focusing on crit all the time And this is kind of like the conceptual problem with crit, right? It's 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 a two case scenario, right? You either crit, right? If you land a hit, you either crit or you don't crit, right? One or the other, right? Now, if I have twenty percent crit or fifteen percent crit or thirty percent crit, whatever my crit chance is, at the end of the day, a crit is a crit. It does the same amount of damage. So, if I have more strength or attack power then those crits do more damage right it also makes my non crits do more damage but vengeance is such a powerful ability that in an ideal situation you have perfect uptime on this which pretty much never happens okay um that is that is pretty much the case so i think you've got to you got to just do whatever you can to find the best combination of Strength AP, agility crit, right? That is just in my, my general rule of thumb. It's just find, find the best combination of the two that you can put together based on like however many itemization points or whatever that you have. Uh, that, is, that is just my general rule of thumb. I can't figure out, I, I haven't figured out yet what the cutoff point is for how much crit you should have before you 100% you focus on that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, moving on. Um... Essential raid consumes major mana potion, uh, demonic or dark runes, sharpening stone, elixir of the mongoose, smoke desert dumplings, wonderful fire water, uh, juju might, juju power, juju flurry, uh, ground scorepock assay, and roids. Okay. Uh, he's leaving out actually a few things here. Um, he's leaving out greater arcane elixir. He's leaving out dragon breath chili. He's, he's leaving out. Um, the, the Flask of Supreme Power, right? So there's a number of spell power consumables that you can use as well. And that's kind of the, the secret of Rhett, 
right? Not the secret, but but a key component of RET that a lot of people don't consider is whenever it's buffs, whenever it's consumes, this, that, you get benefit from spell power consumes and you also get benefit from physical consumes. And that's why having your world buffs and your consumables and this and that is such a big deal for RET and you have such a heavy drop off without it. That's just how it works. Um, I also think like whenever it comes to elemental sharpening stone, you can talk about like spell oils, right? Um, you can do shadow oil, for example. Shadow oil gives you a chance to proc a shadow bolt. If that shadow bolt crits, then, then you get a vengeance proc. Um, and also that scales with your spell power as well. So let's see. Um, what am I? Uh, oh, also, also uh, elixir of shadow power. So you can also do shadow power flat or elixir as well. So, uh, savory DB delight hidden under strength. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, major mana potion, demonic room, dark rune are all really important items for getting mana back quickly when you need it. You will not need these every fight, but having them is important since you do not want to stop using spells because you're low on mana early on. These can restore a huge portion of your mana when used, making them very val valuable in longer fights. Yeah. I think for every boss, like you got to have this stuff and you got to be like chaining them. So <clears throat> I'd rather watch your stream instead of overwatch league. Hey, you can watch whatever you want. You can watch whatever you want. Appreciate you being here, man. Uh, the rest of the consumes are focused on damage increases, most of which adding either strength, agility, or crit. All these buffs can be farmed without needing to spend gold, but if you're short on time and do not mind spending gold, you can do so over potions, elixirs, such as Elixir of the Mongoose. So, again, something to kind of touch on. Um, something else to kind of touch on in this guide is this is mostly focused on like a physical build. Whenever it comes to stat priorities, he doesn't even mention that intellect is still valuable, right? Regardless of what, what build you're going. Intellect is still valuable. And... Um, also spell power spell power is valuable as well so like all like your seal of command has a 20 percent spell power coefficient uh consecration is spell power a, a lot of stuff judgment is spell power coefficient so yeah next page uh talents and builds i thought we were kind of there oh he talks about the specifics of all the talents and stuff <sighs> um i think when we went to the holy guide we looked at all this stuff uh, I will, because this is the ret guide, he talks about everything, because this is the ret guide, let's just look at the ret stuff, um, or the stuff that you would use in a ret spec. In a ret spec, divine strength, divine intellect, 10% more strength, 10% more intellect, great. Spiritual focus, I would probably only use, like, pre-raid, probably. Um, consecration, this is AoE damage, it ticks every second for eight seconds, AoE holy damage, the scales with Sanctity Aura, the scales with Spell Power, the scales with Judgment of the Crusader, if that happens to be on. Good for AoE. Uh, if you have the mana to use it, it, it is a nice bump to your DPS while that's up. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, if you're trying to, again, min-max to the nth degree, you're really only going to be consecrating whenever you have Vengeance up, right? Because it'll, it'll also increase the... Vengeance also increases your consecration damage by 15%. So Vengeance procs and consecration... It's not going to line up perfectly because it's they're both eight seconds. So if you get a proc in that, then there's going to be, ch -ch -ch. but yeah. So let's continue. Um, precision, three percent hit. We talked about that already. <clears throat> Retribution, improved blessing of might. This is nice. Twenty percent more attack power and blessing of might. But you can have a holy paladin who has who has this as well in your reign. Uh, Benediction, this reduces the mana cost of your judgments by 15% if it's max rank. Typically, I get 12% because I, I take out one point, I put it into Repentance just to have it. Improved Judgment, this is a direct DPS increasing ability because it reduces the cooldown of Judgment by 8 seconds. Or sorry, by 2 seconds, so it goes from 10 to 8 seconds. Improved Crusader, this is kind of a weird one because you're typically not going to be judging Crusader very often in raids if you're min-maxing. Uh, you can judge Crusader, but it takes up a debuff slot. And really the only person that it helps in vanilla is you. In Burning Crusade, Seal the Crusader is awesome. Or sorry, Judgment of the Crusader is awesome. Because it increases everybody in the raid's crit chance who's attacking the target, 3% crit. Really, really good. Uh, deflection, uh, parry, Vindication. Uh, you're not going to have this for PvE. But Vindication is a PvP talent, essentially. 15% minus strength and agility for 10 seconds. It's a proc. One more thing for them to cleanse. Conviction, 5% crit. You need this as a prerequisite to Vengeance. 
Uh, seal of Command, this is your primary DPS uh, seal, right, in a physical build. And uh, Chance on Hit, 70% of normal weapon damage. This is approximately 7 PPM. Uh, Pursuit of Justice, I like Pursuit of Justice. It's a great talent because it increases your move speed without needing a move speed enchant to your boots. Move speed is nice because it allows you to move from target to target faster if you have to avoid any mechanics in vanilla. You, you can move around more quickly. And uh, also you can get an agility enchant to your boots for 0.735% crit. Seven agility is, is 0.735, or sorry, 0.35 crit. I don't know why I said seven. 0.35% crit. Eye for an eye, this is a PvP talent. All spell crits against you will do 30% of the damage taken back to the caster. Uh, damage caused by Eye for an eye does not exceed 50% of Palin's total health. This is mostly PvP. Actually, it's, it's pretty much PvP talent. Um, Ellie Shamans, Fire Mages. Warlocks. Any, anybody who does big burst caster damage if they get a crit against you, this will do a lot of damage back to them. Improve Ret Aura. This is typically not something that you're going to see at max level. This is something that is really good for leveling, in my opinion. Uh, you could technically do Improve Ret Aura and put yourself in with an AoE tank or something like that if you wanted to. Uh, <clears throat> but, I, but, I, but I would not. I wouldn't particularly recommend it. Two-handed weapon spec, 6% more damage with melee. Clearly you want this, more damage. Sanctity aura, 10% more holy damage by everybody in your party. Here's a problem, okay? Here's a problem. Sanctity aura is going to be the primary aura that you're going to keep act active, right? Unless you need resist for a fight. But it really only helps you. The only other case where this does help more people more than you is if you happen to have a smite priest, which is probably not going to happen. Or if you're in Nax and people are throwing uh, Stratholme Holy Water. Same thing for Judgment of the Crusader. Vengeance, again, we talked about this already. This is the key to your damage. Repentance, this is a PvP talent, but I like to get this in general. Okay? I like to get this in general, even whenever I'm PvE build, because there might be a situation where I'm in a five-man or... I'm running around the world and I have to repentance somebody. It's one talent. I give up 3% mana uh, mana reduction on my seals with, with uh, benediction, right? Judgment and seals. Oh, also something else. Repentance actually works. At least it worked this way on private servers, right? It could be wrong. But uh, it, it works on the Prophet Scarum, the first boss of AQ40. It's nice to have repentance because if somebody gets mind controlled, you can repentance them and it gives them... Basically, it gives your, your, if you have a mage or a warlock or somebody CCing them, it gives them time to, it gives them six seconds to polymorph the guy or whatever before he goes rampant and goes nuts on, on your group. So, yeah. Um, but other than that, like, it's, it's not really, I, that's the only raid situation I can think of being able to use it in. <clears throat> Standard PvE, we talked about this for the talent build, hit capped. Uh, if you're hit capped. PV, oh, well, it's, yeah, I mean, PVE ret, right. It just, it's probably just copy and paste. Uh, so let's take a look at this. He says, if you're hit capped, what build you could go with? Hmm. I do think this is something interesting to talk about. I do think if you're hit capped, can I take, can I mess around with this? I do think that if you are hit capped, then it does open the door a little bit. Now, again, people are saying that it's 3% hit, 3% hit um, from the weapon skill, if you're a human, 3% uh, from your, so sorry, you get 3% from, from human skill. And then if you have this talent, you get another 3%, right? So you start out at 6% and you need nine. So if you don't have this talent, if, you, if you're at like 6% hit, then you can put more points in holy. You can put more points around. And this is something we were talking about before where you can kind of have a little bit increased. Um, you can increase your value to the raid and, and put more points in holy or do some other stuff like that. You can get improved wisdom, I guess, if you want. But you're probably already going to have a holy paladin with that. Right. Probably. Um... But what you can get is you can get improved lay on hands, which is nice. I, I probably wouldn't get spiritual focus, right? But I would probably get improved lay on hands. So you can lay on hands every 20 or every 40 minutes instead of every hour. And then you also get 30% armor bonus. Uh, on Chromagus, you know what would actually be really good 
is on Chromagus, we typically had a Paladin with improved Lay on Hands. When Chromagus enrages, Warrior Shield Walls, Paladin improved Lay on Hands, so he just gets maximum defense. 30% more armor, Shield Wall, all this stuff, pop the cooldowns, do whatever. So you can so you can survive for, for the last bit whenever Chromagus enrages. If you have a Rep Paladin, if you have a Rep Paladin who does trash, like... Absolute trash damage on Chromagus. Rhett, Rhett does not do good damage on Chromagus um, because of like the, the magic resistances and stuff like that. Like you're you're basically pure support in that fight. You're cleansing, you're doing this, you're doing that. Improve lay on hands would be really good for the Rhett Paladin to use in that situation, so that, that way your holy paladins can keep their mana up and they can just keep spamming the big heals. So again. A lot of these examples that I use, these aren't for like the, the hardcore, the speed running, the 1%, right? The like at that point, everybody's gonna be so good that it doesn't matter. But in a more typical situation and stuff, this is something that you could do that would be that would add value to to your that you would add value to the raid. Uh so yeah, there's that. Unyielding faith, increase your chance to resist fear and disorient. There are some mechanics in there, there's some fear mechanics in vanilla. Uh there's something like that. And then you have three more points, right? Uh, three more points. You can put these wherever, right? You could put these. You could put these in healing light and increase the amount you heal for if there's ever a fight you need to heal. Or something else. Let's see if we can work this out at all. Could you do it in a way that... And then whenever I think of like healing light, right? This would be like a situation in... Like Saffron in Nax. Saffron in Nax is a very healing intensive fight. And that might be a situation where your guild just needs you to heal, right? If you're in a situation where the guild just, you just have to heal on this certain fight or whatever, that's when this would be valuable. If you can find a way to get Illumination, right? You would take two points out of something here. Illumination could be good if you have a bunch of gear that's like crit heavy. Specifically on Saffron, if I happen to have a bunch of like offset holy gear with a lot of crit and whatnot... I, I'm, at that point in the game, I might go in Illumination. Uh, early on, where I might not have a lot of spell crit on my gear, I would just like do low rank of heals and, and probably go Healing Light and that. If if that's a build I wanted to go. That's not super min-maxi, but it's something that you can do. Hi, S-Fan. My boyfriend and I love you very much. Nice. I miss the police force? Hey. Don't worry, dude. Paladin Police Force is coming back, Okay. S-Fan, Dracova, maybe even Spoogie is coming back. Trust me. Come come classic launch, okay? It's coming back. Don't worry. Yes, S-Fan PPF. That's right. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. That's uh, that's kind of how I feel about that if, if you're hit cap. Let's go back to... Uh, <laughs> let's go back to... Why isn't it... Why isn't it... Oh, what? It makes a different page every time I put in a talent? Hmm. Okay. There. Good thing I opened up another one. Okay. Uh, what else? Blessing of Kings. Uh, you're typically going to have a Holy Paladin with Blessing of Kings. Uh, this is not something that I would worry about as a Rep Paladin. Uh, going like a Blessing of Kings PvE build. You're you're in a raid. You you typically have somebody of blessing of kings. Now, if you're in if you're like doing like five man content, maybe this is valuable, right? But a lot of times people want uh, people want might or wisdom and stuff over kings anyway, or even salve. Uh, what else? Okay. Yeah, those are the three bills that he shows. Yeah, so that's kind of how I feel about that. Uh, Rep paladin PvP. Uh, Guardian's favor. 10 holy, 10 prot, 31 rat. Okay. Uh, and then reckoning build. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have some thoughts about this. Okay. So. The interesting things. The interesting, one of the interesting things about ret paladins or paladins in general, not just ret. There's like a million different ways to build them. Okay, there's all kinds of different stuff that you can do. This is saying this is a Guardian's Favor. It's calling this Guardian's Favor PvP. Guardian's Favor is really, really important for PvP. Really, really important. And I, I would get this in almost every spec. Precision 
you only really need 5% hit for PvE. You only need 5% hit for PvE. Or sorry, PvP, excuse me. Uh, so this is not something that I would typically go with in PvP. Now, if you just have no hit and you want to do something like this, sure, whatever. Uh, spiritual focus. Not having pushback on your, on your heals is nice. But again, this is something that I typically would not go with. Um, again, there's, there's so many different builds you can go with. And it, it all comes down to different ways that you want to play your character, right? This is one of my things. Whenever people say like, wow, is so cookie cutter. Or sorry, vanilla wow is so cookie cutter and all the talent builds are the same. It's not, right? Not every, like, there, there's so many different variations that are technically viable based on the situation that you're in. Uh, this is probably not something that I would typically play personally. Uh, also, as far as like PVP goes, as far as PVP goes, I would, I would not not get deflection. Deflection is an amazing talent. This is, this is a secret OP, like insanely good talent. So the reason why this is so good, 5% parry is there's a few reasons, right? One is you have like 5% base parry chance. So what five points in deflection does, it doesn't just increase your parry chance by 5%. Does that sound very good to you guys? Does, does it sound very good whenever, whenever you say 5% more parry? Just in general, right? It sounds kind of meh. Yes. No. 1 20th more chance. I'm glad you said it like that, Neptune. I'm glad you said it like that. You said a 1 20th more chance. That's not the case. What if, what if this talent red doubles your base chance to parry? Now that sounds pretty good, right? That sounds pretty sick. Because that's actually what this talent does. What this talent actually does is it double it, it, it doubles your base chance to parry. That's pretty strong. So that means a 5% increased chance, double your chance to completely avoid a physical attack because you get to parry. And not only that, but you also get parry hasted. And the concept of parry haste, which makes parry a very powerful stat for tanks as well, is because when you parry, you swing back at your target 40% faster. So really, really good against melee and PvP, All right? Really good against rogues, really good against warriors, that kind of stuff. Let's say a shaman runs up to you, good against shamans, you know, he hits you and you parry. Even an elemental shaman sometimes will smack you with their weapon. What if you parry it and you swing faster? So there you go. This guy parry seems really good. Yeah, parry's a great guy. So yeah, uh, parry, uh, parry is a really, really powerful stat in PvP. It's it's basically like dodge, except you don't get parry, uh, you don't get parry haste with dodge. So anyway, yeah, there's that. Um, so I think this is really really important in PvP. Uh, I wouldn't get benediction typically. Not that you can't get it. Uh, you can you can get improved might or you can get benediction. Right? It, it's a it, it's like a really a preference thing. I like improved might. Just do more damage. Benediction could be nice in a situation where, let's say, you're getting spam purged or something in PvP, right? Spam dispelled. Um, and also, you're not always going to have Blessing of Might up in PvP. So you might have Kings if you have Kings in PvP. You might have Wisdom. You might have Freedom. You might have Bop on you. Now, you're constantly changing your Blessings uh, if you're doing it right. You're remembering to rebuff yourself, change your Blessings and this and that. But that's just something to consider, right? Now, this isn't the case. But to that same respect, if Benediction increased the uh, reduced the mana cost of your Blessings by 15%, then it would be absolutely insane. But it's not. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's just really Judgment and Seal. Yeah, implying you, have, you even have Might in PvP. Exactly, Exenia. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I don't like Improved Seal of the Crusader in PvP typically because I don't really get to cast it unless it's against like a Warrior, High Armor Target. Uh, a lot of times this drops because you don't swing back again to refresh it in time <clears throat> because like you might be running around or whatever. Uh, Conviction, really good. Seal Command, good. Pursuit of Justice, really good. Pursuit of Justice is especially good. Pursuit of Justice is especially good in PvP because it increases movement and mounted speed. 
movement and mounted speed. This means I can keep my normal boots on, have a stamina or agility enchant on them, and I can be in world, uh, just running around the world on a mount and then hop off maybe while I'm in combat and I still keep the same boots on. I don't have to have like mithril spurs on my boots. It does not stack. It does not stack with minor speed, which actually makes it better. It is, that doesn't really make it better, but it, it makes it easier to, to work it in. It makes what I'm specifically talking about work. Um, so yeah. Uh, eye for an eye. We talked about that earlier. Really good for PvP. Two-handed weapon spec. Sancti Aura. Vengeance. Repentance. We talked about all this stuff. These are all really, really good. Uh, so you might have a situation where... Now let's look at your talent points. Um, there's a few different builds to go with. And this is what I would use as a ret. This is what I would use as control spec for ret. That's what I, that's what I call it, right? Uh, Devotion Aura. Guardian's Favor. 3%... Or, sorry, 3 toughness for uh, higher percent armor. Then I go there. And then I get maybe a point in Anticipation. Well, actually, no, I wouldn't get this. I would get this. The reason I get readout over improved Devo is I almost never use improved, or I almost never use Devo, right? There's a higher chance that I might randomly whip out a shield uh, whenever I, I, I really, really need to. Um, so, yeah, maybe getting like two points in anticipation or something like that, and then hammer justice. Uh, anticipation isn't great, but it does increasing your defense skill a little bit is nice. It does give you parry dodge. Uh, but parrying dodge if you're using a two-hander, right? It gives you block too. Uh, very, very little, but that's there. Uh, and then with the control spec, you get 18 points in prot to get improved hammer of justice to, to decrease the cooldown of your hammer of justice by 15 seconds. What this does, what this does is if you pair this with the PVP set, you get minus 10 seconds and you get a 35 second cooldown on what was a one minute cooldown so you get almost, it's almost twice as fast, right? Uh, for improved hammer justice. So really nice, in my opinion. I think this is really, really good. Um, and then, this is probably this is probably typically what I would run. And like, I call this control spec. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I might go there, I might do that. Hmm. There's a bunch of different things you can do here, actually. So you can go five deflection, right? And you can throw an extra point in vindication. And what an extra point in vindication is going to do for you is this has a chance. It's 5% it's instead of 15%, but that still puts up a debuff on the target. So that's one less thing he can cleanse, right? Let's say you're fighting a warlock and the warlock has a fell hunter. And what does the fell hunter do? It can eat magic. So your hammer of justice is a magic effect. It can get cleansed off. So if Vindication is on there, the Fell Hunter might cleanse off Vindication instead of Hammer of Justice, which is huge. Um, in general, if they're like spamming cleanse on themselves to get rid of a Judgment or this and that, let's say you have Judgment of Wisdom or Judgment of the Crusader or something, right? Vindication is one more thing that they have to that they have to cleanse off, that they have to dispel off. So in a deep rep build, I think this is fine. Uh, late game, late game Vanilla WoW. I think it's not crazy to take points out of Pursuit of Justice to take two points out of Pursuit of Justice and put them here. The reason why is because late game, people have a lot more stats. So Vindication is a talent that scales up the longer Vanilla goes. It's going to scale up with the different phases. You're in Nax Patch, people will have more strength and agility. What does that mean? That means your debuff is going to be more valuable because it's percentage-based. So that's how I feel about Vindication. So I'm going to no life classic, but in the meantime, should I level up on retail or would it be a time wasted? Well, what does time wasted mean to you, right? Uh, this is kind of something that I've been struggling with a little bit, like playing retail. But um, it's, is it fun for you? It, doing something, doing something and having fun with it and staying entertained, I think that's what matters. If it's not fun for you, then I, I don't think it's going to particularly help you get better at vanilla. I think the only situation where playing retail can help you out in vanilla is if you've never, ever, ever played WoW before and you just want to be familiar with some of the terminology, some of the terms, right? And just kind of get used to some of the terminology and just kind of how the game feels in terms of WASD, I'm moving around in the world, I'm playing an MMO. It's different than like playing a MOBA or a, an FPS game, right? What are you rolling for classic? Rhett Paladin. 
Yeah, Rhett Palin. Played Rhett since, not day one, day six, I guess. Day six is whenever I created my account. But uh, but I do think in general, Classic is very new player friendly. So um, that's that's kind of my my that's that's my general in a nutshell opinion on this. Do what you think is fun for you. <clears throat> uh, have you considered rolling a warrior or a rogue? You're a big boy. You don't need the safety blanket, bubble, and self heals. <sighs> I'm only a big boy in real life. Deep down inside, I'm a I'm a little baby. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's that. This is like a control build. Uh, another build is like deep rep PVP build, right? Uh, are donations not working? Uh, I just pause them for a second. I'll, I'll I'll turn them back on in a second. I just pause them and they'll all play through, and we'll 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 touch on that and then then I'll go back. I'll, I'll do it after this. I just want to make sure. I don't want to be interrupted because this is what I noticed, right? Uh, like if people donate or sub or something like that, like obviously the the notifications will, will go off eventually, and I want people to get credit for that, and I want to thank them, but. Uh, for the sake of doing this and posting it on YouTube, uh, I noticed in some of the early videos that I was getting interrupted a lot. And I don't mind personally, right? Like I'm, I'm very cool and relaxed with that. But uh, other people, I, I feel like the viewing experience for people watching this on YouTube, uh, it, it kind of impacts that negatively. So yeah. Anyway, uh, what I call the deep ret PVP build is when you do something like this and go there. 5, 11, 35. You get Blessing of Kings. You get 5 Divine Strength. 35 Ret. I like this. You get everything you need in Ret. You get full Vindication. Similar to the Control build. You're also getting a lot more damage with 10% more Strength. Now, you do this at the cost of Improved Hammer of Justice. You lose out on anticipation, you lose out on toughness, but these essentially fill up as, uh, essentially turn out to be filler talents um, for you to get this. This is like the big thing in this build, right? In the protection tree. Um, so yeah, this is my deep rep PvP build. Another thing he talks about is he talks about reckoning. Uh, there's a few different ways to go about reckoning. And I think he does this wrong. I would not get 2% Strength. I would get 1% Vengeance. Uh, I would not get Benediction. I would get Parry. Again, we talked about how amazing Parry is. Um, sorry, you get 4 Parry in this build. Um, oh, sorry. Something I didn't touch on, I, I, I talked about this earlier and I, I kind of miss, uh, I didn't want to misinterpret this, right? I don't think precision is terrible for PvP. I don't, I don't want people to misinterpret this. I don't think precision is terrible for PvP. If you're in a situation where you already have hit cap without it, you don't need it. But if you do need hit cap, precision is important. Okay, just kind of, I'm backtracking a little bit here, but I, I, don't, I don't know if I said that. I'm not, I'm not sure if I said that. Precision is important in PvP, but you, you need to have that 5% hit. Um, Anyway, continue. Um, am I on the right thing? Here I was. Here. Uh, 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 where was I? I was here. Okay. Uh, so if I'm going reckoning PvP, uh, let's say I'm not hit capped this time, right? Hypothetically, right? If I'm not hit capped, then I would go this build, improved Hammer of Justice. Well, I'd get readout instead. Um, you could get improved Diva Aura. Let's say, again, this is another variation thing, right? Comes down to preference. Let's get improved Devo, hypothetically. If I got improved Devo, I wouldn't get Anticipation, and I would get one point in Readout. And the reason why I would get one point in Readout is Readout gives you, there's a visual indicator of whenever you get crit, uh, and, and a crit reactive proc goes off. The same thing that triggers Readout triggers Reckoning. So if I see the animation for Readout, that means I know I got Reckoning. It is, a, it is a strictly preference thing. That's why I always want readout whenever I'm going Reckoning. Um, it allows me to count my procs, do whatever. Is there a specific reason why you're using Windows XP over Windows 10? Well, look, let me tell you. They just, they, just, they just don't make them like they used to, man. They just don't make operating systems like they used to. That's just the way it goes. That's just life, you know? That's just life. Um, anyway... <laughs> yeah 
So, um, it's definitely not a skin. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely not a skin. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, what was I saying? Reckoning. So this is a typical Rhett Reckoning build that I would look at, right? You have the Improved Hammer Dress, as we talked about earlier. Reckoning is kind of one of those meme -y interesting things that you can do with Paladins, but Reckoning is like this legendary lost ability of like, oh man, Paladins were insane with Reckoning, this and that. Reckoning is not quite as good as people remember it to be. Okay. There's some things specific with Reckoning that can make it not so good. It gives you a 100% chance to gain an extra attack after being the victim of a critical strike. The way this worked on private servers, and let me tell you, let me preface this a little bit. So whenever I played Paladin back in the day, um, I like almost never played Reckoning. I, I just, for some reason, I was just like, I, I, I for some reason, it's, I feel like it's not very good. I feel like, uh, I, I just kind of feel like I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I have like nothing whenever I use Reckoning. And I, and I didn't know why, right? I was like 13, but I just felt like it wasn't good. On private servers, I was like, okay, maybe I'm older now. I, I just, I'm better at games, all this stuff. Reckoning is great in the right situation. It's amazing in the right situation. Uh, a lot of my old PvP stuff, you would watch me play Reckoning. My preference is I like the Rec control spec. That is my favorite PvP spec. Deep Red is nice too. I like being a Rep Paladin. But Reckoning was, was just insanely good in certain situations, and I used to play it a lot on my PvP streams. Now, how this worked on the classic beta... How this worked in the classic beta, and apparently how it worked in vanilla, which, which goes back to kind of... Basically, it, it kind of proved my original thought whenever I first started playing private servers of like Reckoning was not very good. How Reckoning works is, is kind of like a parry haste. Whenever you get crit, it swings back immediately. Whereas on private servers, let's say you had, this is your swing timer, zero, 3.5 seconds, right? If I got crit at this point in the swing timer, then this would tick and I have, and I would have one stack. So then whenever I swing here, swing, swing, I would get two swings off on private servers. Let's say I had like three or four mobs on me. Crit, 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 crit. I got crit four times. That is the max, the, the max of four stacks. So four stacks plus, plus one for five total hits. So I'd go tick, 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 tick. And I would hit five times in 3.5 seconds. These are white hits. So I get three, I get five white hits at the point whenever this dropped. This is wrong. This is not how reckoning works. This is how it worked on private servers. And whenever we and, and whenever we played on the classic beta, this is what we found out. Whenever we played on the classic beta. Again, this kind of went in line with my original thought process of like Reckoning didn't seem very good. And I didn't realize why whenever I was younger. But whenever you get crit at this point, what happens is it moves the end of your swing timer right here. Da -da 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 so now you swing right away at, let's say, the 2.2 second mark, right? And then what that does, resets you back at, 2.2 plus 3.5, 5.7. So you'll swing again at 5.7 seconds. Do you see what I'm saying? So the proper way, yeah, I know. This is a really big nerf to Reckoning, actually, compared to private servers. Uh, compared to private servers, a really big nerf from private servers to classic. So if you, oh, so what else does this mean? Let's say you're at range. Okay. How did the Paladin one shot Kazakh back in vanilla? Well, it, it, it that was before it was capped. It used to have no cap. Uh, they, they added a cap like literally the next day, whenever that thing happened. But before that, it was no cap. Um, so, yeah, it used to be insane. 
So yeah, yeah, no cap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so another thing, because this puts you at the end of your swing timer, this only works whenever you're in melee range, in swing range of the target. So let's say you're fighting a caster, right? You're fighting Mr. Mage here, right? Mr. Mage, he's evil, right? And Mr. Mage shoots you and he gets a frostbolt crit. You don't get another reckoning. Like you do, right? But if your auto attack is enabled, it pulled you back to the end of your swing timer. So that means your reckoning proc is wasted if your swing timer is active. So it ends up not doing anything. Now, if your swing is off, if your swing is off, then it gives you a second attack, right? At the end of this point. So that means if you're playing Ret, or sorry, Reckoning in, in P, uh, Reckoning Paladin in PvP, that means you literally constantly have to cancel your attacks. Cancel, swing, cancel, da 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 da, -da. cancel, or swing, cancel, da 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 da, swing, cancel, da 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 da, -da. swing, cancel, da 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 da, -da. swing, cancel, da 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 da. -da. So <laughs> it actually ends up being a very like kind of mechanically intense class <laughs> if you want to play Reckoning. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a bad Wind Fury. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, kind of. There are videos of TBC. Well, in TBC, Reckoning was entirely different, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So I still think Reckoning is probably not very good, but that that is like the, the kind of uh, alternative to playing it, right? <clears> or <throat> the, the alternative way to, to, I guess, play it. And I, I mean, I think that should work, right? I, I didn't get to play it enough in the classic beta before I kind of like had all this figured out to like really know, but that's, that's kind of like my... Uh, that's the way that I see it. So anyway, let me look at notifications now. Sorry about that, guys. I, I went a long time without looking at notifications. Pools 89 just resubbed for two months. It's close. And you <laughs> can't wait. Haramanster, Drasnar, thank you for the Prime. just resubbed for three months. Holy fucking shit, he is coming. Run for your lives. Mr. Tango Down, thank you for the three months. Pulse, thank you for the two months. Liquor and Gun Fund, thank you for the two months. Gyron with $5. Garen donated $5. I am. So, ready for the police force. I'm also ready for new Merchus fan. How long do you intend to string me along? Just take my money already. <laughs> no, sorry, Gyron. Sex Jesus just resubbed for five months. I just fan TV rate my PvP rights back. I'll take a look at that in a second. Rigo, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Flower Basket, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Hubla Goo, can you talk about Rec Bomb? Well, this is kind of what we're talking about now. Hubla that was a while ago. $3. Thank you for the $3. Can you talk a bit about Rec Bomb build? Gaming Bow just sub for two months. Gee gee, brother, man. Thank you, Gaming Bo. Thank you for the two months. Teak, thank you for the tier one three months. The real big the psych. Underscore, real underscore big psych just resubbed for two months. Very good. Two? Two? Hi, Thanks chat. for the two months. Jokes aside, love the stream, fan. You have me saying for IRL all the time now. Love it. Asfand, you fan are socialism. Wait, what? <laughs> thanks, thanks for the two months, big psych. Real Therio, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys so much, man. Um, take a look at your build. Okay, so looking at this build. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, this works. This works. I mean, this is, this is very similar to, like, the, the control spec build that I was talking about, right? Uh, you, you get 10% more, or you get, sorry, you get 2% more armor. Try to unlock. You get 2% more armor, whereas I would just probably get Vindication, one point in Vindication. Right, it's a preference thing, right? I, I like Vindication because it's one more thing for them to cleanse. 
No strength in Horley, a Sterling mistake. No, not necessarily Muxor. It's just different builds, right? Uh, this is like if you want the control spec, right, where you get improved hammer justice, then. I mean, you could get like. I could get 4% strength in Holy, but I personally would prefer to have 1% more parry and also uh, that Vindication. How'd your beer grow back so fast? I have a sea of testosterone flowing through my veins. Yeah, superior genetics. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I would look at there. Um, I, think I, I think I mostly finished talking about this with Reckoning. Um, there's also Holy Reckoning that you can go... Uh, that's kind of like another, that, that's more of a holy PVP thing. Uh, you can kind of do like a spell power reckoning build. There, there's so many different things to talk about whenever it comes to paladin PVP. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like some people, frick. Uh, did we lose our guide? We lost our guide. Uh, okay, let's load it back up. Okay. Uh, some people look at everything, so like cookie cutter and this and that, but the reality of it is, and, and this is why paladins are so interesting, is, is they have a lot of like intricacies and a lot of nuance to the class, and there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, so yeah, there's, there's all kinds of different builds and variations that you can come up with. Yeah. So many different things that you can come up with. Um, let's move along. Let's look at some of the gear. Um... Let's look at some of the gear here. <coughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, I forgot to Able move here. X five hundred. You know it's your fault if everyone in classic will play Rat Paladin. But seriously, thanks for the great advice. Th thanks, Adler. Thanks for the five hundred bits, dude. I I, I mean. I it's funny whenever like whenever Northdale came out, and I didn't play. I played. I played on Lightbringer. Um, when our Northdale came out, I was like, dude, people told me all the time, like other people I used to play with, dude, there's so many Rhett Paladins running around and they're all clueless. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe like, I, I don't, I don't know if that has anything to do with me, but, <laughs> but, uh, there, there, that's definitely been a thought from, from some people for some time now. Um, but I, I've always been, uh, I'm, um. Uh, I've always been pretty honest about Rhett. Outside of memes, right? I think I think people know whenever... Well, they should know whenever I'm memeing and not memeing, right? Uh, whenever I'm kind of playing it up, hamming it up, like in my old raid streams and stuff. But, uh... I, uh... Yeah, yeah. I, I've always been pretty honest, right? Okay. Um, hey, S fan, I've been loving the new classic videos on YouTube. What's up? Hey, what's up, man? How's it going, someone? Someone XDD? Uh, yeah, let's look at gear by face. Uh... Best Rep Paladin gear for Phase 1. We kind of looked at this kind of stuff before, right? Uh, Mask of the Forgiven, Eye of Rend. Uh, Mark of Forging, yeah. True Strike Shoulders, yeah. Um, I mean, this is if you need the hit, right? I mean, you, you always got to look at hit, right? So it improves your chance to hit by 2%. Eye of Rend doesn't give you hit. It, so, so looking at everything, you kind of got to look at it by like hit chance and stuff like that. Make sure you're hit cap first, because if you can't hit, you can't crit, right? A potential miss... I'm swinging my weapon. I miss. If I hit, I have a chance to crit. If I miss, not only do I miss, I also have a chance to not crit. Or sorry, I don't have a chance at all to crit. If I crit, then I get vengeance. So if I'm missing, that is a 0% chance to proc vengeance. That's another way that I look at it. I don't just look at it as like X% percent chance to crit. I think of it as X% percent chance to proc vengeance. And that makes it, that, that makes it uh, more more valuable to me whenever I, th that makes crit more valuable to me whenever I think of it in that regard. So you'll see me judge rank one seal at command, even though it doesn't do much damage, you'll see me judge rank one seal at command, hoping that I get a crit, right? And then it's really, really good. Um, give me one second here. Let me check this. Okay. Uh, cape of the Black Baron. That's really good. Stone skin gargoyle cape. This is a PvP cloak. Um, Savage gladiator chain. This is not best in slot in real vanilla. 
with true progressive ionization, but it's not the case. We have the new version. This is amazing. This is this is good until AQ40. This is unreal. So this drops in BRD uh, off the uh, off the gladiator event or off the arena event. So um, battleborn arm braces. These are good. These uh, these drop off of uh, uh, rend in UBRS. So these are really good. Uh, give you a hit chance. Give you a crit chance. Um, hands gargoyle slashers. These are good. Uh, these are leather gloves. Devil sword. Paladins gloves. should only be holy at all times. Jeez, there is no other so spec for paladins. You're so if you're loud. Red, it freaked you're me garbage. out. Yeah, you're yeah. terrible. Yeah, Don't yeah, play red. It's garbage. Play holy. Paladins are meant to heal only. Only yeah. anybody else is a is a yeah yeah. You slurp cum, okay? You suck. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Thanks, McConnell. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, Devil Sword Gauntlets. I would only get Devil Sword if uh, I would only get Devil Sword if I also have the leggings. So I would have the the uh, I'd have the set bonus, right? So they go together, so I get two percent hit. Cloudkeeper leg plates. These are good. Cloudkeeper leggings are good, but. The on use doesn't stack with uh, it, it doesn't stack with blessing of might. At least that was that was that was how it worked on private servers, right? Everything that happened on private servers is subject to change. You will see guides come out now. You will see me talk about stuff. You'll see people talk about stuff, and it ends up being outright wrong whenever you can test it out in classic, right? And that that is I I I have tried really really hard. Like there's a lot of times people talk about they talk they they speak in definites. Everything is exactly this way. Everything is exactly like this. And it's just not. It is just not, right? Like it, not not everything is 100% that way. And uh, you see it a lot on YouTube and, and I know it's like okay, like this strengthens my argument and it strengthens what I say, but but I think honesty is really important and and honestly like who knows? On private server, whatever I tested Cloudkeeper like plate. Or actually I didn't test Cloudkeeper like plate. Somebody else did and, and I asked them to test it cuz they got him. And uh, they said it did not stack with Blessing of Might. Uh, Omar Skurza Strainer. This is from a uh, this is from a Quest. Is this from a Quest or is Brigham Girl from a Quest? I think this is from a Quest. This is from the Quest in LBRS. Reward, yeah, yeah. reward from Warlord's Command. Uh, Warlord's Command or Maxwell's Mission. I think Maxwell's Mission is the Alliance version. Anyway, uh, it's it's from a Quest reward. LBRS. Oh, mock. Um, Brigham Girdle is also good. If you're not hit capped, Brigham Girdle. But uh, if you are hit capped, oh, mocks. Uh, Blood Mail Boots. Blood Mail Boots are nice. Uh, Wind Reaver. 20 agility, 1% hit chance. Uh, maybe. I mean, I would get the... What are the plate boots called? There's two other plate boots. And I'm blanking on their names right now. Maybe somebody can help me out with this. Oh, I didn't even, I wasn't even reading here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it tells you the source, but <sighs> Saffron Scale Boots, and there's another one. Saffron Scale is one, and then what's the other one? Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers Greaves or something like that. Uh, so yeah, th those are some other boot options, and, and let's go ahead and load these up, actually. Um, Battle Chasers... Battle Chasers Greaves, Saffron, Saffron Scale Boots. Okay. Uh, so 9 Strength, 9 Agility, 14 Stamina, 14 Strength, 13 Agility, 8 Stamina. I think these are these are other options uh, for Boots as well. Wind Reaver Greaves, this is 1% crit, 1% hit. Um, again, if you're not hit capped, you are not going to need hit cap. It, it, hit cap is is not nearly hit cap is not nearly as big of a deal as uh as it is for like a fury warrior where you're dual wielding or something like that right you just need to get your nine percent you're good so I, I would probably not get one reverse um now blood mail boots on the other hand uh, it's kind of the same thing right with one percent hit if you're not hit capped uh but this does give you some intellect so there's something interesting that i wanted to point out with blood mail 
is it does give you a little bit of intellect that as far as pre-raid goes, and if you're going with a physical build, this is one of the few pieces of intellect that you're going to find. Would you recommend Unstoppable Force for Paladins? Unstoppable Force is an incredible, incredible Paladin weapon, but you don't have it until AV is out, and then you're exalted with AV. Um... Pain Weaver Ban, Magni's, Magni's Will. Yes, these are good. Blackstone Ring is good if you don't have hit. Myrmidon Signet. This is this is a PvP item. This is a PvP ring. But, uh, I mean, if you if you don't have these, then yeah, of course, you could use that. Hand of Justice, Black Hand's Breath. These are your bread and butter. The, these are the big boys. Black Hand's Breath is awesome for a really long time. Hand of Justice is awesome for a really long time. 2% chance to get a crit. 2% chance on a melee hit to gain one extra attack from Hand of Justice. And then also 20 attack power. Hand of Justice is amazing. You get one more chance to hit. One more chance to hit means what? One more chance to crit. Yeah, two? Two hits? Yeah. Uh, so really, really good. Uh, Arcanite Reaper is a very, very good two-hander. It is an axe, so you don't get the alliance, or sorry, you don't get the human sword and mace bonus skill. You don't get the sword and mace bonus skill, but it's still really, really good. It's slow, which means a higher, uh, a higher proc chance. For Seal of Command, right? 7 ppm, slower weapons, higher proc chance. Um, now, also, another option is Backblade of Sharam. This, in, in actual vanilla with true progressive itemization, this is not that good, and it gets buffed later on to be slower, and uh, I, I believe it does a little bit more damage. If I, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong about that, but it's definitely slower. Early on, it's just way too fast. If you happen to get a Backblade, drops off of Dracosath and UBRS, then uh, this is also really good and you get the weapon skill. And I think weapon skill is really, really valuable. Dreadforge Retaliator drops off of Emperor and BRD. Dreadforge is a, it, it's good. 1% crit, 30 attack power, 1% parry. So the parry is good for PVE. Uh, there's also, um, also other options, right? The uh, the Blackrock Slicer, right? Apparently they changed the name. So, um there's that, and then also going with like, um, um, what else? There's like Malone Slam in, uh, one small, Malone Slam. Uh, there's also this one, right? Loading, 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 loading. Uh, Malone Slam, 3.8 speed mace, and then you would get mace skill off of, uh, you, you'd get the, the human mace skill as well. Uh, and then it has a chance on hit. It, it like stuns him for two seconds, but then also gives you a 50 strength proc for 30 seconds. But I've heard this proc chance is very, very low, right? So yeah, there's a, there's a few weapon options is kind of the point. Um, so yeah, then uh, this is pre-raid, right? And then they go into all this other stuff for the other phases, right? This is, this is post-raid, like once you get in a raid, uh, all kinds of stuff. I'm not positive. Do we know for sure if this is going to drop? See, see, this doesn't drop in phase one. Yeah. I don't think this is going to drop until the BWL patch, I think. And this is, this is something else that I want to talk about. Like Onslaught Girdle, I, I don't think this stuff is going to drop in Phase 1. I think it might not drop till Phase 3, whenever BWL is put in the game. Because this is added in 1.5. See, this is added in Content Phase 3. And the typical thought... Now, this could maybe, maybe this is subject to change, but the typical thought process behind it is that each phase is two patches. Phase 1 is 1 1.2. Phase 2, 1.4. Phase 3, 1.6, right? Um, my personal opinion is this, this stuff, the little, my personal opinion is that this stuff should be added in phase two. I think, I think this should be added before BWL is put into the game. And also I think kind of mixing up what items can drop in molten core, like three months in, adding those items in, like I, I, I say three months, I don't know how long each phase is going to be. This is just like my rough. I, I guess that it's going to be about three months. I would I would predict that. Um, Flame Guard Gauntlet is another one, right? Phase three. See, so many of these items that are in the game, like you want to have stuff that you can get in phase two, right? 
so many of these items are these these have got to be things that you can uh that you can kind of progress your character with before bwl comes out right now part of what makes vanilla wow's like how rating is is fleshed out in vanilla wow so good is because you can do the previous tiers of content and not only you can you need to do the previous tiers of content because there's items in there that don't get upgraded they're not better in in the next tier right onslaught girdle for example this is good until nax where are we at right here this this is amazing until i remember people using onslaught girdle at level 70 i i remember seeing people not replace their onslaught girdle until they got a red belt of battle this 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 was incredible 31 strength, one hit, one crit. Now, of course, they changed it to ratings in Burning Crusade. But um, this doesn't get replaced until it knacks the belt off of Resuvius. Is that who? I, I, forgot, I forgot the belt, but yeah. I forgot what it's called. Resuvius. What's up, Double Penny? How do, how do you spell Resuvius? What's it called? Girdle... Of the mentor was that right <sighs> no yeah, yeah that's right yeah it, it just okay it drops off resuvius so yeah this doesn't get replaced until nax right um so in in some sense it's like okay this is cool that it drops in phase three because it won't get it, it won't get replaced until phase six right so if it drops in phase two it drops too soon or something like that but i think specifically like mixing up what th this that that is a topic right there for a whole nother daily dose probably uh talking about when these items should be put into the game but um let's go ahead and move on from that actually yeah i i don't want to i don't want to go into into all that uh next page rotation and abilities okay you cast your seal and you auto attack that's how this works uh <laughs> i'm just kidding okay so i'm curious what he says about rotation okay your rotation as a rep paladin is straightforward and does not change much the only real choice you need to make is whether you seal a crusader or seal a command. Crusader is better for longer fights with faster weapons, but the issue is that it requires a debuff slot to be effective. Okay, this is a. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to read the whole thing before I tell you what I think about this. In general, debuff slots are valuable, and since the holy damage does not help anyone else in the raid, this is usually considered to be a waste and not worth the slot. In that case, you'll be stuck using command for 100% of the time. With command, you will use. Judgment on cooldown for damage and use Consecration for more damage as your mana allows, uh, but you can always use rank 1 to consume less mana if needed. If the debuff slot is allowed, then you'll want to keep Judgment of the Crusader. You'll want to keep up Judgment of the Crusader by using Judgment while Seal of the Crusader is active. If you have faster weapons, specifically under 3.8 attack speed, it is more damage to use Seal of the Crusader normally and use rank 1 Judgment to get Vengeance procs from potential crits. Okay, this is all this is like all wrong, I think, unless I'm misreading this. Uh with slower weapons, so 3.8 or slower, you'll use seal command after getting judgment of the crusader up and use the max rank of judgment for massive damage. I, I think this is entirely wrong. So Seal of the Crusader doesn't use a debuff slot, but Judgment of the Crusader does. And I think because he's trying to like link the things, that's what I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt here, but I, I think it's See, using Judgment while Seal of Crusader is active um, does not give you vengeance for potential crits, right? Because it's just a debuff. It can't crit. Uh, judging Crusader... I don't know if I'm clarifying what I'm saying or saying he's completely wrong, right? But uh, Judgment of the Crusader, on a long fight, you would use this on a, a car on, a, on a target to basically increase the amount of holy damage, your Judgment, your Seal of Command procs, and your Consecration Doom. So... The issue is, and this he does talk about the debuff slots. If you don't have a if you don't have a debuff slot, um, if you don't have a debuff slot, then you I mean sorry, if you if you are allowed to use it, then great. If not, then no. I mean that's up to your raid to decide, right? It's whatever. Honestly, at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to not kill a boss because you have Judgment of the Crusader up. That's not the case. But whatever your guild leader or raid leader decides, that's what that's what they can go with. Okay. Um so what you would want to do, and let me talk about this. Vanilla, or sorry, Vanilla Rep Paladin rotation is a little bit like, it's, it's more of like a priority thing, you know? It's like if Vengeance is up, this is like, this is the ideal situation. If you have Vengeance, right? Vengeance procs 
15% bonus holy damage for eight seconds, right? In a perfect world, holy and physical, right? In a perfect world, when you get a vengeance proc, hands are white. Okay, vengeance. Then I consecrate, okay? Then I consecrate, and then this is for eight seconds. This is also for eight seconds, so it's not going to be perfect, but... Then I consecrate, and then I get plus 15% bonus damage on this. This uses so much mana, okay? This uses so much mana, consecrate does, that in a perfect world, you're going to be consecrating only whenever Vengeance is up in order to be able to, like, DPS the entirety of a boss fight. You're chugging mana pots. You're, you're slamming runes, right? Dark runes or um, whatever the crap the other one's called. Dark runes and... Uh, I'm blanking, but you guys, you guys know what I mean. The ones that drop in Skullamance. Um, somebody remind me. Demonic, yeah, yeah. Dark runes, demonic runes. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah. Or I got those flipped actually, but you, you, but you know what I mean. Regardless, you guys know what I mean. Basically, you burn some health and you gain mana back. That's how those work. Dark runes are the ones that drop in Skullmance. Demonic runes drop off of demons like satyrs and stuff like that in Felwood. Um, I always, I mean, I always get them confused, but they mean the same thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that I would talk about with like consecrate and this. Uh, you want to try and judge off cooldown if you run really low on mana. You want to judge every eight seconds if possible. If you run really low on mana, use rank one Sela command. Okay, rank one Sela command does the same exact thing as rank five, but the judgment does a lot less damage. Now, what did I say before about rank one judgment? I said that if you think about it as not just a damage, but also a chance to proc vengeance, it gets really, really valuable. So if you run really low on mana and you're having to use rank one, then that's a situation where you would use rank one seal of command and you're spamming judgment uh, off cooldown as much as you can in order to keep your vengeance up time as high as possible. I know my handwriting is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a tablet. I'm gonna get a tablet so I can actually not have to write with my, my hand, but this also helps me kind of keep my brain on track. It's, it's, my, it's, it's the, the, the football guy in me, right? It's, this, this helps me keep my brain on track. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, yeah, question mark, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Judgment stacking. This is a very uncommon build, but has high potential. If you use Judgment of the Crusader, so Judgment, while having Seal of the Crusader active, it increases the target's holy damage taken. If you have multiple Paladins, use different... This doesn't work. This is, uh, this is confirmed not, not true. So this whole, this whole section, you can nix that. Um, judgment stacking is something people talked about. There's an argument about it in the private server scene. Uh, it, it doesn't work. It was basically early vanilla, and I, I very specifically remember seeing multiple like judgment of the crusader debuffs on a target before I, I have a very vivid memory of that there's a vivid image in my head of it but as it turns out it was just a visual bug in early vanilla that got fixed later on and i think it even came back there was a bug that came back in the 2.0 patch somehow uh that's what i heard that i heard that it came back in 2.0 and that was one of the things that like confused a lot of people and thought that it actually was a thing but it wasn't so yeah you, you can't do different ranks of seal of the crusader so, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I tested, I tested this on the beta. So it worked for 1.8. I, I think it was a visual bug. That's, that's what I, that's what I remember hearing. Um, so yeah, what's up selfish dude. Hey, Hey, Hey dude. Okay. So yeah, this is uh this doesn't work in classic next page stats. Didn't we already talk about this? Um, he kind of already talked about everything. Uh, spell power. We kind of touched on this before. Enchants. Um. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Strength of gloves. Boots, agility, mithril spurs. You won't use mithril spurs if you have pursuit of justice. Uh, plus four stats. Agility enchant on your cloak. Um. Resist to shoulder. Yeah, it's not until ZG where you get a uh, where you get soldier shoulder enchant. Um, yeah, available shoulder enchant until ZG in phase four. What's up, Sergeant Finesse? 
What's up, S-Fan? Can't wait for Classic. Any word on servers? Not yet. I think they're going to announce them either the day of or the day before or something. I, I'm just assuming uh, the name reservation day. So, yeah. What's up, Inshow? What's up, guys? Sorry, I, I'm not I'm not reading chat quite as much whenever I do these guide things, these guide reviews, because I, I look at them and, and I'm I'm like kind of because I, I'm, I'm looking at this for the first time, too. Right. So so I kind of have to look at it and kind of decipher like, OK, what's this and, and how do I feel about this or that or whatever? Um, so, yeah. I think we pretty much hit on everything that this guy has to offer. Uh, let's see. Rating consumes. Best flask for rep paladins, distilled wisdom, or titans? No, I would use flask of supreme power instead. Um, elixir of the mongoose. I would also use arcane elixir. Um, desert dumplings, 20 strength. Uh, blessed sunfruit. I don't think you get these until later on. Phase four, yeah. Uh, I think these are AQ. <clears throat> No, these are, uh, these would be ZG. Phase four would be ZG. Um, best alcohol for Rhett. <laughs> yeah, Kordok Green Gog. Okay. Uh, best potions, major mana potion, demonic and dark runes, elemental sharpening stone. This is, I mean, again, shadow oils and stuff like that. Because here's the thing. 2% crit is nice, right? 2% more chance to crit. But if you crit, you crit. If you have the shadow oils and you have some spell power and stuff on your gear, that scales the oil scale with spell power, and then also those have a chance to crit. But the crit chance is based off of your spell crit. So if you have world buffs, that's a really high spell crit with Anixia and stuff like that. Again, world buffs is another complete, dis like that's a whole discussion that I want to talk about in another daily dose. Um, yeah, and, and some opinions I have on the world buffs. Best DPS consumed for Rep Paladins, uh, Crystal Charge, Dark Iron Bomb. Yeah, using like bombs and grenades and stuff are, are nice. I mean, Dark Iron Bombs, that are, those, those will get really expensive. Um, the Jujus, Waterfall Firewater, Gorpok, Ground Scorpok, Assay, and Roids. You would use one after an hour, you would use another one. In like a perfect world, right? Let's say your raid lasts two hours in a perfect world. You use a flask and then you use boom, boom, two hours, you're good. Um, Anything else? Whipper Root, Night Dragon's Breath. I like these Night Dragon's Breath for if I need a, just a quick little boost while I'm running from mob to mob. Uh, do you think blacksmithing is worth it as Rhett? Yeah, I think so. I think blacksmithing can be good for Rhett. I think you. I, I think engineering is really, really important, and I think it fills a lot of the gaps in your class. But uh, I also think if you were to go engineering blacksmithing, it would not be a bad idea either. Two-hour raids? What is this, Modern WoW? No, you can do two-hour raids. Yeah, I would I would expect to say see like uh like in my guild like I, I'm not gonna have a super hardcore guild. I want my guild to essentially be like what raid three was, uh, maybe with a little uh, with with some things done differently uh, that I learned throughout the course of being a guild leader in in raid three, right? Um, some things done differently, and ideally in phase three we're going to raid one night a week. We'll have two scheduled raid nights, but if we do a good job, then we won't have to go back, right? Um, eventually, I want to move towards two hours, basically like a two-hour BWL, and then go to MC or something like that if, if we want to do that. That's that's my current thought process. Um, yeah. Best defensive consumes for Rhett. Fire protect yeah, different potions. I, I think this is kind of... You don't really need to touch on this kind of stuff. PvP consumes the Sapper Charge. is a PvE consume as well. Uh, Iron Grenade, Thorium Grenade... Faps, yeah. I mean, this is now it's just kind of like listing a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, yeah, overall, what I would have to say about this guide is, um, honestly, I, I think that, like, I think there's a lot of misinformation about Rhett on the internet, and uh, I, I, I think that this. I think that there's some parts of this guide that um, kind of falls in line with that, right? I, I don't think everything is completely wrong. I know a lot of people are messaging me about this and being like, oh, like, this, this, this guide is this, this guide is that. Um, I think there's some things that aren't, like, taken into consideration, right, whenever people think that, right? A little bit of uh, sensationalism, right? But, um, but yeah, I, I think this is... Uh, I, I think overall it's okay, right? You look at some of the talent builds and stuff, like, even though I wouldn't particularly... Uh, use the kind of builds that he uses very often or not every time right um i would uh that's kind of what i would say about it right 
Mind talking about something else other than rent? Well, here's the thing. Here's what I do on Daily Dose Top Cat is I, I usually pick a subject, right? I usually pick a subject and I will go in on it uh, every day, right? I'm doing this until Classic comes out or uh, the semi-Daily Dose of Classic maybe, right? Because I might not do it one of these days and, and just take a break or whatever where we'll talk. We might look at a guide. I might bring up a subject, something that I want to talk about on my own. Um, Advanced Classic Warlock DPS Guide by I'm Alive. Alive is a very good warlock. Alive is a very good warlock. We might look at his guide. Uh, we might look at his guide uh, at some point. Uh, I think war I think Alive is, is a very, very good warlock. Um, so we might look at the warlock DPS guide at some point. But yeah, like I, I want to I want to go through and uh, touch on you know something right whether it's a guide we might look at some videos and kind of kind of give um, give thoughts or feedback on a certain video if you guys have any ideas if you guys have any ideas for things that uh you want me to talk about on daily dose you you have any videos or something hey maybe you should watch this and, and kind of give us your thoughts on this um uh, maybe leave it in the comments on youtube because i do post these on youtube uh post them on my subreddit and i'll take a look at that maybe i'll notice that on subreddit if it gets a lot of upvotes or something maybe i'll look at it um if that's, the, if that's the kind of thing that people want to see. So anyway, I know this was a long episode. I think typically these guide reviews are going to be longer episodes because there's a lot to look at. But I do appreciate you guys joining me for Daily Dose. We're going to keep the stream going. We're going to play... Today we'll play a little bit of Warcraft 3. Um, but I'm going to keep doing variety and stuff like this until Classic comes out. I, I got some more games planned. Uh, I think at some point, Miskiff and I are going to play Portal 2 maybe next week. Maybe late next week, Miskiff and I will play Portal 2. But for tonight, uh, I'm going to keep going with some Warcraft 3. I've never played Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne, before. So um, I'm playing through that. I'm not good at RTS games, right? I, I think that's no secret to anybody who's seen me play an RTS game. But I'm kind of playing it for more of the lore and the story and this and that. So uh, yeah, that is, that is something that's fun. So guys, anyway... Everybody say bye, YouTube. Everybody wave bye to YouTube. Say bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me. If you guys like this kind of content, feel free to sub to my channel. Uh, I, I stream almost every single day. Join the Discord. Discord.gg slash SFANTV. Get involved in the community. Twitter, SFANTV. Instagram, SFANTV. Twitch, SFANTV. Everything is SFANTV. So really simple, really awesome, uh, really, really great. So... Again, thank you so much for joining me. Hit the video with a like, because that helps me, I think. I don't know. Nobody really knows how YouTube works. And I'll see you guys next time.